Huh. <sighs> Man, it has been a dry summer. Game releases have almost halted. This drought is killing me. And the Steam Summer Sale recently filled up my library with tons of games. If only there were some way to solve both of these problems at once. Hmm. So I have a massive backlog. So what? Everybody does. But since I'm a paid critic and all, I don't really have the time to play the games that I want to play. That I need to play. You know, the classics that everyone talks about. The classics I've never played, even though people constantly yell about them on the internet. So you know what? Screw new releases. Yeah, it's only indie stuff until September. And, uh, eh, how about that? Ten weeks until September. That's a nice round number. So I think it's about time for another top ten list. These are the top ten classic video games that I've never played. This should prove interesting. So let's get started. Number ten. Conker's Bad Fur Day. A masterpiece of platforming design with a smart Alex squirrel who flies around and collects stuff. I've never really played any of the old rare style collect-a-thon platformers, and since ukulele is coming out, this will make a great primer. Plus, from what I've heard, the music is great. <laughs> Even if there is, you know, a singing pile of excrement. I am the great mighty Pooh, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. I hey, it could be worse. It could just be lying around in the open in a big desert or something. Number nine. Transitions! I'm a genius. Anyway, it's Red Dead Redemption. This critically acclaimed title from Rockstar is still on everybody's minds, with a rumored current gen port possibly in the works. It's been almost five years since YouTube started bombarding me with advertisements for the game, and I've had a used copy of it lying around for ages now, so hey, may as well go a rustling. That's what the Texans say, right, partner? Red Dead Redemption takes place in Texas, right? Kind of? Screw it, I'm going with it. Number eight. Moving away from the brutalities of the Wild West and into Kirby Superstar, Sunshine and Rainbows, yay! The only other Kirby game I've ever played is Crystal Shards, which I guess was kind of okay. I mean, I didn't finish it 100%, but whatever, I tried. And Air Ride was pretty good too, but I guess we don't count it. Surfing around the internet, I hear that this is the definitive Kirby, so I may as well throw it in the mix. I mean, come on, eight games. Where has a deal like this been all my life? Because if there's one thing I'm always concerned about, it's having more games. Number seven. Dishonored. Okay, yeah, while we're on the subject of Steam games, let's throw one on here. I'm a huge fan of old-school first-person stealth games like the first Deus Ex and Thief games. And of course, while Human Revolution turned out to be alright, the Thief reboot wasn't really scratching that particular itch too well. But I hear Dishonored does, with open levels, a cool art style, and oh, that blink. That blink mechanic looks so cool. Dishonored is definitely the number one stealthy, stabby priority for this list. Number six. <laughs> Banjo-Kazooie. You thought Conker was going to be the only rare game on this list? Ha! And I wouldn't act so surprised if that rare logo turns up later. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <clears throat> but anyway, when it comes to collectathon platformers, I hear that the Bear and Bird are the King and Queen, respectively. And it doesn't have any singing turds, so that's probably a plus. Or a minus, if, you know, you're into that for some reason. And who knows, if I like it, I might move on to Banjo-Tooie sometime. If, you know, I have the time. Number five. Resident Evil 4. Thanks, title screen guy. To be honest, I've never played any game in the Resident Evil series, so I honestly didn't know whether to go with the first one or this one. 
I mean, they were both recently remade on Steam, so it's not like it was an easy choice. But since RE4 has the whole revolutionizing the modern video game industry as we know it today thing going for it, I guess I owe it to myself to play a small piece of gaming history. And who knows? I'm not really that much into horror games, and I swear it's not because Amnesia scared the crap out of me, honest. So this might be a great gateway drug, and that might help me later on down the list. <coughs> More foreshadowing. <coughs> Number 4. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. Bam, gotcha, bet you didn't see that coming. Another rare title, but it's actually the sequel to a rare title that I actually have played, the first Donkey Kong Country. See, back when I had an old Game Boy Advance, I was first exposed to Donkey Kong Country, and the atmosphere and art style did a really superb job of drawing me in, even if the graphics weren't really as great. But I was a kid, and I couldn't really afford the sequel because I had no money. So now it's time for me to finally get down to it. Man, especially with that music. It's the best Donkey Kong game around. Allegedly, I guess. So I owe it to myself. Number three. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. What? He's never played Yoshi's Island or Diddy's Conquest? How many platforms is he missing from his palette anyway? Well, only those two, and maybe Braid. I guess. I actually really love the platformer genre. As I applied a minute ago, the first Donkey Kong Country is one of my favorite games ever, as is the first Super Mario World. But when I hop on message boards or YouTube comments, people laud the first Yoshi's Island game, which is, I guess, the second Mario World game? I don't know. But anyway, it's apparently the greatest platformer of all time. So I'm obligated to at least give it a try, because I may be a platformer fan, but with half the games on this list already being platformers, I guess I'm not enough of one. So I'll play it. Fine. Lay it on me. Number two. Silent Hill 2. Yep, there's that second survival horror game. And as a serious paid critic, this is probably another shocker. One of the best stories in video game history, with some of the best atmosphere in video game history, and some of the best... Well, I hear the combat's not that great, but still, many game aficionados refer to this one as one of gaming's best works of art, right up there with Shadow of the Colossus or Papers, Please. And hey, I'm a huge believer in the storytelling potential of video games, so this one should be a no-brainer. If I don't pee myself with fear first, anyway. Not that I'll do that. And number one. If you watch this channel regularly, then I hope your living quarters are blast-proof, because number one is going to blow your mind. Ready? Are you sitting? Alright. Star Wars. Knights of the Old Republic. I know, right? I've loved Star Wars since before I can remember, and I've loved Star Wars video games since shortly after that. And Bioware is one of my favorite developers, with all three Mass Effect games ranking among my favorite games of all time. Yeah, all of them. Even the third one with the shitty ending, it's still one of my favorite games ever. So having not played Knights should be something of a statistical impossibility. And yet, it's true. I've never played Bioware's Star Wars opus, so I think it's about goddamn time. This summer, I'm playing Knights of the Old Republic and all the games I just listed, in fact. Starting next week, I'll be uploading highlight videos showing my reactions to these games. Reviews, I think, are kind of moot, because, come on, we all know these games are classics. So, maybe you'll find more value in my reactions rather than my opinions afterward. Although, I'll probably include some opinions afterward anyway. So, let the great backlog offensive begin! CHARGE!